executive team are looking on um, probably have their uh, primary information with the government and things like that. Government satisfactions are probably done, um, but I can start from up there and I'll take an hour from the time we start. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. And I think I have us live. I think everything is working good. Is it showing on your, your thing? Okay, perfect. All right, so we are live and you can take it away, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon to everyone that's uh, and morning to those that are in other areas that have joined the Kingdom Women's Gathering today, Business Enterprise for Women. And um, I really thank uh, Teresa Scudder, Minister Teresa Scudder and her daughter in Asia and all the team that's working with them. And I also thank um, my senior leader, Apostle Joseph Leonard and all of the teams that are working with me with Legacy of Glory ELM Ministries. And we are six churches, and six different locations. But it's a joy to meet with you and to be able to share this time with you. And some of the areas that I initially, and you see, this is the logo for Kingdom Women, Kingdom Women Empowering Women. And that's what this is about. Uh, men can empower men and it takes a man to make a boy. But guess what? It takes another woman to help identify with another woman as to situations that happen in their lives. And in the business area, I teach in a lot of different areas. Business is one of my uh, things that I love to do. I'm a, a legal consultant and a professional tax uh, preparer for business taxes, all kinds of taxes, legal divorces. Oh God, <laughs> the array of wills, oh, power of attorneys and all the things that you know legally can be done. But I want to get into some of this information with you today because this is important. Uh, I wanted to really go through a whole line of stuff, a whole line of information. And um, I figured, no, uh, let's go through the meat of what, where we are right now. And if we can pray before we start, let's pray before we begin. And Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for this time, this gathering, and this season of life. Father, we thank you for all things are well and excellent. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor for what you're doing. And Father, we thank you for the release today of information. And we thank you for the release of people as they begin to move out mm -hmm. by faith to begin to do the marketplace things that bring kingdom results for kingdom women. And we give you praise for it today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My initial thought was to go through areas on how to start your business, how to get your business started uh, uh, and working on your dream uh, and survival tips uh, in the midst of a pandemic sort of like uh, jarred me a little bit more this morning as I began to prepare. And I want to use this time to talk about how we have to, and, and the necessity for uh, you and I now is to begin to survive in areas of survival where we were not able to in times before. And I'm just gonna adjust my little screen here a little bit more um, to uh, survive during this pandemic. Uh, many businesses uh, did not survive. Many Brook, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, brick and mortar businesses have closed. Uh, you will find some of the more flourishing businesses is not at a store, a brick or mortar store, but it is in the area of informational te technology. And I want to just um, encourage you as we begin to talk about this, uh, to consider and to also take notes if you have a pen, a piece of paper, take notes because this is survival. And whether or not you're going to need it today or maybe next week or the week after, you know, we are all going to have to come through this pandemic of uh, in our business, not just our home, but in our business relationship because we are looking for 
uh, and we have already projected for ourselves the goals that we want, the things we want to see accomplished. And nobody expected a pandemic to come in the way that it has, but it's here. So we're gonna have to deal with it. And if you have um, taking notes, let's talk about the first thing of surviving. And the first part of the survival is to embrace the change that has taken place. We cannot reverse the pandemic. We cannot uh, reverse some of the things that have happened even to us individually uh, with our families, losing loved ones, all of those things are detrimental, detrimentally uh, hard. But we have to learn as we are business people to embrace the changes that are taking place and changes are all over the place. We never imagined that we would even be on Zoom. <laughs> we never imagined that we would have to do certain things, wear masks, gloves, you know, do all these other things. Uh, we never imagined we see other people in other countries, but never was going to be us, but it is us. And so uh, we have to lock down and we have to begin to embrace the changes because as a result of evolving external factors in this world, we have to evolve too by showing up and when you, I say embrace the change, show up as your best, even if you were a, in a brick and mortar business or if you were visually uh, seeing clients or visually seeing your customers, you have to be your best self in the face of this adversity. Uh, another thing is we got to prepare to embrace change head on because change has addressed us and change has come to us head on. We never expected these things to happen but because we have to revisit things in our lives to make different changes, it's going to necessitate for us in our own uh, business mind to make changes. And you cannot wait to make changes later. You have to start making changes now. When the pandemic began to take place, there were things that we put in corporately, we put in place to address um, having to uh, uh, see clients. You know, we were not able to see face-to-face, -face, so we had to readdress and recalibrate uh, our business idea of meeting people and selling with our uh, uh, visual selves, <laughs> because women are visual, you know, uh, our visual selves and be our best self if we are in a Zoom room, or if we're on a telephone call, you have to still keep your levels up of excellence, of service, and uh, not allow what has happened to be a atmosphere of excuses, where you start getting excuses for everything because of the pandemic. And most people, you know, I, I watch people very carefully, and I've watched uh, how most businesses, governmental businesses especially, carry on business because they blame everything on the pandemic. You can't get into the motor vehicles because of pandemic. You can't gotta make an appointment at the bank because there's a pandemic. You know, everyone wants to blame everything that they can't do on the pandemic, but there's things and ways that we can do things better. And it is just a mind of an individual who will embrace that this has changed. And we may not, in a lot of business areas, and I, I tell you, we may not go back to the way it was because things have changed. There are shifts that has taken place economically in our financial world, uh, a high financial world. And there's things that we have to do because those things impact us as smaller businesses. So first of all, we need to do is embrace that. We got to make some changes. If we've been doing things one way and it has not worked, you have to shift and make the changes quick because people, I, I wanna show this to you visually because people have gotten already out the gate. And some of the things that people have gotten out the gate are some of the same services and some of the same products and which we, you know, we look at that's going to be the success of our business. So if you're going to be successful now, you have to get out the gate of where you are in the past and begin to 
uh, 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 embrace the changes that have gone on and begin to make changes for the future and to begin to make them very quickly. The next thing I wanna talk about is leveraging your time. Now, <laughs> I'm in business, you're in business. And one of the things that we always, and I always have problems with is balancing the time. And especially, <laughs> this is really good, especially because we're women and we're at home. So if you're working at home, unless you have excluded a specific place of area where nobody comes in and disturbs you, it's very hard to keep up with time management now because you find yourselves, the children are at home and you got to fix lunch. So it makes you have to get up and go and tend to things that are in your home that you would naturally attend to if you were working nine to five at somewhere else and not working from your home and conducting your business matters from home. And you have to leverage your time and also allow yourself to work less and focus more on the parts of your business that require more attention. You know, sometimes we can do busy work and it doesn't matter to the task at hand. Daily, you need to write down at the end of your day what you need to get accomplished tomorrow. I'll say it again, write down today. Be because if you're doing it just out of whimsically making it happen and pray that it, ha it will not happen because there's always gonna be little business snafus if it's nothing but that the computer won't work correctly. You know, it's things that you have to leverage and to balance your time so your time can be more uh, 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 purposeful for your business. And many times as I started speaking and saying that a lot of times we wanna do a lot of work, 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 but we have to process and give the parts of our business that requires the most of our attention, our attention, and not try to rely on the busy kind of work. And see, when you have, when you do things like that, it involves delegating authority to mm -hmm. someone else to do things. Now that becomes, oh my God, that becomes so difficult when you're a small business. Because first of all, you're looking to people who will volunteer their time to help you basically until you get up and running to be able to pay people. But that's only part of it. The main part of leveraging your time is that you yourself have to be a better time manager and planning your working days and remember it's okay to take a break. Many of us don't take breaks during the day. I don't mean go fix food for someone else. I mean, take a break, walk around the corner, walk around your block, get some air, get some refreshment, get some more uh, 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 energy or, uh, you know, get the energy from God when you're walking and begin to process that and begin to think about the things that you can incorporate in your business in these things. You need to take a break. Number, the second part of this, of taking a break is that you need to get up. Many times people are having, and there are more, and statistically reading in uh, Forbes magazine, you know, there's more people that are having, women that are having back issues because they're now in a lockdown working from home. And, uh, you know, it's the same way they would have done at a business sitting, but it's the different when you have the uh, uh, ability to stand up and work, to move around and work, and those things, you know, you have to make sure you keep your body, keep your body healthy, keep your body strong, because you are, you really, you're, you are the individual who is the CEO head of your business. If something were to happen to you that you go down, there would be a financial suffering from your, in your home, because your business is part of what sustains your home. So you have to take care of yourself like you take care of your car because your, my dad used to say years ago, your body is a car. And sometimes you just got to go to the body shop or sometimes you have to go to the, you know, to get things repaired. You know, that's no problem, but you still in essence of everything 
Take care of yourself. And somebody else needs to put their phone on their thing on mute. Okay. Anyway, I'm used to being on Zoom, so it's fun. Now, another area I'd like to address is most, and mostly all of us have given birth to children. So in the sitting position, even the sitting position I'm in right now, I should not stay here in this sitting position for hours and hours and hours and hours, because there's an issue that you have uh, uh, as a woman sitting in that area, having given birth, there's a certain back soreness, backside, mm -hmm. all down through your soreness that begins to happen when you begin to sit too long. So you have to leverage your time and allow yourself to take some breaks. Allow yourself to just go and get a glass of water. Allow yourself to go out and walk. Uh, uh, avoid letting your day go by to waste by just planning you know, days by the hour. Know what you have to do and work on your plan because to do something by the hour and say by, you know, four o'clock, I'm gonna do this, two o'clock, you, 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 unless it's a appointed thing that you're doing, you have to leverage what you're doing and put it as a level of importance as to how you're going to get it done. Another area I wanna talk about in leveraging your time is not taking on too much. And I might have to hit that a little bit later in here because that's gonna take some time, but it's also included in leveraging your time. And so as well as your planning tasks, also factor in wellness, factor in self-care, factor in meal times, yes. Factor in just some meditation on the word of God because you need it to keep you energized and less stressed. And also, you know, take some times where you just rest in order to avoid a mental breakdown and burnouts because it's easy to burn out because instead of working at a, a place of business, you're in a place where you're running your own business and it's all on you. You have to make it work. And many times we feel that pressure and we feel that burn up, burn out, I should say, of trying to make it work. So take some time, breathe some air, do some things to help you to be able to get ideas, to get strategies, to be able to help your business regardless of where you're at. So know what hours are in the day that you work best, you know, and many times as business people who are entrepreneurs, we sometimes try to work through the night to accomplish things we wanna do in a day and we're less effective. You need your rest. I'm 62 years old. Do you know I need my rest? <laughs> I need my rest at night. And it keeps me refreshed for the next day for what I have to do. It keeps me refreshed so if my client comes by and I have to put on a mask and come to the door, I don't look bad. You know, it helps you with your face refresh, your body refresh, your, your aura, the way that you present yourself, it makes it the best of you. And that's what we want to keep in front. A thing, something that a person once saw, they need to see that again and again and with improvement. Because sometimes our businesses involve our interaction with clients. It's not necessarily just a you're going to do a thousand tape recorders and you have to send them out. That's not it. It's that some of our business is you have to meet the person. You have to sell yourself what you have to offer. So you don't want them to think that the reduplication of what you have to offer is going to look bad if you look bad. You want to make sure that it's, you know, it's in the level where that person would uh, uh, tell someone else through word of mouth about your business. Most of my business, I, I hardly advertise. Most of my business is by word of mouth, by doing a great, excellent job, and by having people also who are friends or relations with that individual which I've served to bring other people. I mean, I've had whole families that left other people for me to do their taxes because of my level of service in doing them. And people just don't want to know one thing, if you are well-versed in your business, get that well-versedness out to your client. 
to let them know that you can compete with anyone else that's out there, anyone else that's in the same business as yourself, and put little edges on your business so that it becomes a curiosity to the individuals as to what more do you have? You know, that is some of the ways, you know, that you help yourself in the midst of the pandemic is to help you leverage your time, leverage you because you are the most important product in your presentation or in what you have to sell or what you're offering as a service. Now there are number three, and you can write this down. There are three R's of business. And in this pandemic, uh, things that we have to do, and you can write these things down. Number one, develop your routine. Develop a routine. Sometimes we get lax because we're at home. Sometimes we want to, we want to come in a Zoom room not looking right, you know. But, you know, I, I feel that when you put your makeup on, you put your hair, you get your body, you do all the things that you would do when you walk out the door to go to someone else's job, do it for yourself because this is your job. So there's one thing, develop a routine. Develop a routine so you're at your desk at a certain time. Develop a routine because it, it's it's... It's really strange in people's uh, 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 individual businesses. They seem to do better or do better for other people who have to watch them all day than they do for themselves. And you have to operate your business just like you would go in and take over someone else's business and do any other thing for them. You have to do and have to conduct your business in that same excellent manner. So you can't sleep until two o'clock in the afternoon and start operating your business every single day. That doesn't work. Like, I'm just going to sleep in. No, sometimes you can, but not every day till you just getting up late and you just let, you know, there's no energy. There's nothing, you know, nothing happening. Same old thing happening. You're going through the same routine. And if you find yourself stuck, develop a new routine and lose yourself. What do I mean by lose yourself? Lose yourself so self don't have the predominating factor of the whether or not you get up or not. I'm getting up. I got work to do. I got clients to see. I got things to do. I can't lay around and eat grits and bacon all morning. You know, I have to refresh and retrain myself to do things differently now because this has become very different for us in business. So number one, develop the routine and make your routine so that you're not overwhelmed. Work on your routine so your routine can be uh, accommodating for you and the things that you have to accomplish for the day. And that may include your family. You know, that may include that you have to close your computer down at six o'clock when it's time for prayer night or for service. You can't just work through it. You have to develop the routine of time of things you need to get done and develop that routine so that you become disciplined in that routine, okay? Number two is refresh your body and your mind. Refresh your body, refresh your mind. And I spoke about that before, analyze your business. Educate yourself further. I think uh, on our, my last Zoom meeting with Kingdom Women Enterprises, I spoke about this, how people have let this whole pandemic go by and they haven't learned anything, a second language. They haven't even learned how to lay their weave down right. <laughs> I'll put it down. It's all on YouTube. People talk about, you know, uh, oh, I gotta go and do this. No, why go and have somebody else do it for you when you can learn how to do your own nails? You know, why go mm -hmm. when YouTube shows you how to do it? YouTube will teach you a new language. You will be able to expand yourself if you know a secondary language. And I, I know in Arizona and in those little pocket areas where they say that the, the, the wall was built, you know, the necessity for Hispanic speaking people on those borderlines is so detrimental. They need people because thousands, oh my God, if thousands of children 
are pouring into our borders, do you think that they need people who can care for them that speak Spanish or people that can care for them that will open up a home, a business, open up a home to take in those children until they are claimed and have them have the US government begin? You know, you, you got to you got to put yourself so that you are in the thick of it and able to address whatever needs to be addressed. But to be able to go in and open up homes for those children, buy some houses on the government's dime, you know, if you look on, oh God, I'm gonna go into a lot of things right now, right? If you look on to the government's website, do you know that they are giving money to first time home buyers? If you never had a home, you can get a grant for up to $5,000 towards your, your closing or your deposit or the, the, some of the fees for your attorney. They're giving it to you. I mean, what else can a person do? You have to and reinvent yourself so you are there to accommodate the need now. You know, they need homes for people who are disabled. They need people that will be home health care operators that will operate a daytime business whereby seniors come in for the day and they will give you money to do it. But if you lay back, like, you know, this is just gonna happen for me because I'm selling Avon. Are you kidding me? There are thousands of Avon people. There are thousands of Mary Kay people that can outsell you any day. You have to find the, where the need is, not what you wanna do, but where is the need and how can I address it with what I have to offer? Refresh your vision, not a bad word. Refresh your vision. If you were, your vision was to do something and you started doing it, it's not quite, because mm -mm, it's not quite right, it's not taken off, that's because it's not a need for it. You have to know when there is a need for a thing and know when to address that need and how to address that need. And that's how a lot of people came uh, into uh, 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 suitability during this pandemic to do certain things, to be able to offer certain things, to be able to offer expertise advice in certain things because they refreshed themselves in what they were presently doing and or expanded where they were to do more than what they were doing. They saw that their dream was not just a dream for the 1990s and the 2000s 12, 13, 4, it is four, and what they have been driving at the whole time of their dream or their vision is for now. So refresh yourselves. Know that what we need is businesses to cater, businesses where people have missed the demand. And when the demand is there, you can eat, that's the people that make the money, the people that meet the demand for that particular moment. So retrain, re listen analyze, restructure, refresh. And the last thing I wanna talk about is reboot your business. Because some of you have given up. You have literally said, you know what? You might've even came into KWE headquarters and said, you know what? I'm going to not be a part of this because my business isn't working. Well, reboot your business to cater to the adapting market and use the knowledge you have gained. Some of you have knowledge that is by experience. You know, I gave an individual who had a Zoom morning program, uh, uh, Zoom and Facebook. I said, now, if you're gonna sit there and talk for an hour of how great people are, why don't you offer some things to them like they do on Good Morning America? If you, are, you, you have jewelry, why don't you go on and have a jewelry a fawn and show your jewelry, get your people on here, the people that like jewelry and get on Zoom, get on Facebook and talk about this piece, just like QVC. Oh, this is a Jane Kennedy cross with diamonds and it is on sale today. You know, if they can do it, you can too. <laughs> I even spoke to the person, I said, you know what? People are so desperate for so many things. You could go to the dollar store and just pick up some things that you're going to sell for that day and see how it does. Those are things that you do in restructuring and rebooting your business idea. 
you may not be able to take all your jewelry into the store where you were going to go and open up your business down on, on Market Street. So you have a bigger audience on Zoom. And the more you get people to buy into what you're doing, the more your revenue, the more the stability of your business, everybody does not have to do the same business. There's a lot of things that can be done. There are cleaning businesses. Do you know how many people now need people who will just go online, <laughs> go online, develop a little booklet to give to them when you go meet them and let them know we're doing cleaning for coronavirus through your house. Get the little spray things that look real good. Spray them. They only cost $99, spray them. Get you a mop bucket and some cleaning supplies and things of that nature and begin to clean. You can multiply yourself because people do not have the time nor have they ever did it themselves. So you might as well go clean for them. That's your business. But guess what? You go clean one house. And I know this from my housekeeper. You go clean one house, it will cost you $200 for that house. So if you get three or four houses a day, guess what? By the end of the week, you will never have to worry about another rent payment, another, another nothing payment, because you're making your money and you're stabilizing yourself and rebooting yourself. It may not be the thing that you want to do, but guess what? It's the thing that makes money and you'll learn to love it just like you learn to love, make money with everybody else. You know, people cannot pay you what you're worth. People cannot pay you, I'm telling you, what you're worth. I don't care how many paychecks they give you, how many bonuses, you're still worth more than that. And especially working for yourself because you're working from your will. You're not working from something someone gave you on a piece of paper that told you what you had to do. It's because of your passion. And I don't want you to lose your passion during this pandemic for kingdom building. Because kingdom building does not mean that we're building something to make a big old kingdom somewhere. That means we're taking back what the enemy has stolen and we're converting it around for the good of those who love the Lord and making sure that when they come out, they come out royal. And that's you because you are a kingdom woman. Number four, and this is the fourth area I want to uh, ad address with you today, is that don't fall victim to the hyper productivity hype. Don't let anybody else opinionate where you should be. You know, we often feel compelled to do as women, and this is for women, we feel compelled to do more with the time that we have. Those same 12, 14 hours that you up is something in you that got to do this or got to do that. It's a compelling force to do more, to do more than what you have been doing. So my top tip for this survival would be to take time to remove tasks from your plate that are no longer relevant or aligned with your goals. One of the other things that I've understood is that with being in a situation of a pandemic, that there's more people at home to help with the daily tasks that you do. Your children at home, give them more responsibility. You know, our parents, if they live with us, they're at home. Our husbands, our spouses, you know, they're at home. So in order to make this whole thing work, don't try to work yourself out to the point that you can't do nothing else. You have to not get into that hyper productivity thing where you're looking at how someone else is doing so you wanna do equally or better. No, 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 no. Bright the corner where you are and it will be brighter than the one that has done so much and that's still in darkness. Brighten your corner and God himself will help you. He helps everything in your life. So he's there to help you and to guide you, but don't overtask yourself. Be rational in your decision about where to allocate your time and where to allocate your resource, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a theme that I've always loved. It's called the ugly theme. 
at the end of the day, ugly U-G-L-O-I, you got to love yourself. And when you're burned out, it's hard. You know, it's hard to, to, to do some of the things that you would normally do for yourself because you just burned out. That's not the purpose. And that's not why we do so many productivity items surrounding our businesses changing. You know, that's why we do so many of those things so that we can come into a place of a balance in what we're doing to be healthy for years to come. The next area I wanna talk about is that everybody needs a business network. You need a business network and you need a business mentor. Now, I, I, wanna, I really wanna say this because a lot of people, and I, I, I had the same issues coming through business myself, is that it's hard to get experienced people to share. It's hard to get people that are in the same line of business that you're in to share with you some of the uh, intricacies of business, some of the things that even, and, and I, this is the main thing, what do I do next? People, I mean, down to organiz, organization, people do not want to share. And it's, it's crazy because we're not on this earth to be here forever. And my responsibility as a woman in business is to empower other women in business to make sure what I'm being blessed with, I'm not hoarding up to myself, but I'm giving information to people so that they can survive in business. Because after I leave this earth, this world still got to go on. And I pray it has my mark stamp big on it. I hope history talks about me a long time. And see, history got to be able to write your epitaph, your eulogy, history has to write it. And so what you do now and how you conduct now has a lot to do on our future generations. And I wanna say this, as women, we have to make sure that we impart to our daughters the importance of business matters, handling business, and uh, uh, even if they don't wanna be involved in the business, at least speak business to them so that their mind is ticking about something that they can do and something that they can create that will cause a kingdom being taken back for Jesus Christ. If it's nothing but shampooing the dogs, shampoo the dogs in Jesus' name. <laughs> you understand? If it's cleaning, clean the house in Jesus' name. See, what you begin to impart into others, God will help you in where you are. You will receive people to impart into you when you impart into others, but if nothing comes in or out, the gateway is closed. So you have to make provision. That's what the whole black girl rock, a uh, 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 whole thing is about, is empowering another generation. When we look at our new poet laureate, uh, Amanda, we know, you know, somebody has put something into this girl that made her want to think on those terms, made her want to think, uh, uh, about words, uh, etymology, the words, the things that are coming together to describe what she's trying to say. See, mentors are, oh God, mentors are your biggest cheerleaders. And my, uh, my apostle, my, our senior apostle said one thing, uh, something that was so true and I've learned to be in my experience. And that is that you need somebody that you can't talk back to. <clears throat> Smile. <laughs> you need somebody who's a mentor that you can't fuss with. You know, that you can't argue back. But well, I was just, no, 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 no. <sighs> you could be a solopreneur if you want to, but I would rather be an entrepreneur, figuring things out, you know, solo, you figuring things out by yourself, you know, with social distancing with your morality as part of your cheering squad, you know, uh-uh, no. In order to grow your business, you need to tap into a knowledge that you don't have or experience that you don't yet possess. I'll say it again. When you get a mentor, you are tapping into knowledge mm -hmm. that you don't have 
an experience that you don't have as of yet. So you're tapping into a resource that has been there, done that, but don't ever lose with the mentor your primary view. Because sometimes mentors will pull you into what they want to see have done. And that's not where you need to go. You know, you need to be able to go into the places, go into the areas where you know your best experience of life works for you and where your knowledge of what you're doing works for you. My top tip is to join a business network such as this, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. during lockdowns when you don't, you know, when you're more isolated. You need to talk to somebody about your business. You need somebody to come on Zoom and say, you might be doing that a little bit too. Mm -mm, that's not going to work right now. Won't you hold that for another couple of weeks and let's talk about it. And then we'll go back through it again and see where we can line it up and what you presently have. So, you know, it's easy to say you need a business mentor or a business uh, uh, network but you have to open yourself and know that you don't have the answers to everything in your business and that you need help. And the greatest thing that I've had in my life was help. You know, people I couldn't talk back to and also people who I drew information from, knowledge, information. One of the things I tell people in a lot, and I, I do quite a few uh, women gatherings of business training, and one of the things that I tell people all the time is be yourself and don't try to be somebody else and don't try to recreate yourself. You are not Beyonce. So don't try to create yourself to be that. You know, be the best you because you you're not a copycat. You are an original. And your idea, even though many people may be doing it, your business idea, your business idea for you is an original stamp. So use it as such. Amen. Oh, I'm saying amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Create a routine. Num next area is creating. And I've talked about creating that routine in your life and around you so that you don't get thrown off. So you plan your week, plan breaking up your weeks, plan making sure you, and this was good for me, using a timer as I work. If your clock... <laughs> Is your, if your phone is a smartphone, make it be smart and make it work for you. Not just on your hip and say, oh, I got it. I, I, no, if it's so smart, let it work for you. If it's so intelligent, make sure that every 30 to 60 minutes, it gets you out of your seat and beep and say, oh, time to move, time to move. You know, make sure that you do things that will bring a healthy routine and not nothing that's going to constrain you, constrain you from doing your business, strain, constrain you for taking care of your business because you got a lot of other things going on in the house. <laughs> we do, you know, we got to pray. We got to read the Bible. We got to wash. We got to wash clothes. And I, oh my God, it's a lot. And women carry a big load. You know, you carrying the load for your family. You carrying the shopping of the food. If you're not ordering it online, can't see it, but you know, you, you, you're doing the shopping for the food, you're washing the clothes, you're making sure that the children are learning in their classrooms and that they're not cutting up in the corner somewhere. They're not sitting there playing with their, uh, 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 their games and their phones and their smart stuff that they think is more smarter than you when you walk in the room like, oh, I busted you. Like you were watching TV on your phone. See, you have a lot to do. But one of the other areas I want to talk about is guard your mind during this time as well. Guard your mind. Maintain a healthy mental attitude. Maintain it. You know, not just survive, but maintenance in this time is just as important as you're going to find gloves and toilet paper. I'll put it in masks. You know, maintaining a healthy, Guard your mind, guard your heart, guard what you hear. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people will say things to you that will almost devastate you concerning your business. Like, oh, why are you doing that? You know, uh-uh, no, 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 mm -mm. It's essential that you choose to be diligent 
about what you read, what you listen to, and the conversations you engage in. What you listen to, the conversations you engage in, is the key in maintaining your positive mindset and keeping your momentum through this period. Don't let people with negativity words stick to your choice vision. Don't let them sit there and, and, and take you through it. You know, uh, get people around you that will help you, that know that you have a vision and that your vision is real and that your vision is your goal of life and that you're mixing and you're doing all the things that you need to do and they will encourage you and feed into you and make sure that you are doing your best self at all times. They'll give you, you know, critical, uh, 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 critical uh, 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 words sometimes, but then not to kill your spirit. If something kills you or someone, and I'm gonna say this, if something or someone is around that constantly, you don't need to be hit like that. You know, always, it's never a good word. It's more, more non-edifying words than they are. You know, it's not edifying at all. It's just a, a, a rebuke of a sort. You, it, it doesn't mesh with what's going on. You need to be built up. You need to be encouraged. You need to know you can do it. You need to know that you are your best self. You need to know that you can do it no matter what, no matter what has happened. You need to know that you are genuine, that you are a gold mine, that you can make money, that people employ you to make money for them. People employ you to work out situations for them. And don't be afraid of what you got because what you got is priceless to the world and to the efforts in which God has given you that dream and to begin to speak to that dream so that green dream grows, okay? Don't be hard on yourself. Complete little mini personal audits daily. Take some breathers, take some deep breaths, and don't try to get into all the other strange stuff, yoga and all that stuff. And say, I'm, you know, just take some breaths. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe it out. And don't be hard on yourself. Do some things, and this is the next area I'm, I'm going to get ready to uh, wind up. But do some things for your personal development. And I talked about those things, which we need to be on YouTube. Uh, we need to be on YouTube because it has learning experiences from different angles of different areas, even learning experiences, because you know what? A lot of people are in my age of category. I'm 62 years old. So a lot of people are in that category where they have not embraced the technological world. They can't even go into, oh God, Microsoft. <laughs> they can't email. They can't scan a document. Mm -hmm. This gets people left so behind because you always are going to have to employ somebody to do those things for you that you can't do yourself. Yeah, YouTube. All of those areas are big, thank you so much for your comment, are big areas for you to go in. And, you know, see, that's why I, you know, I don't have a lot of pity when people say, well, I didn't have the schooling like you. That doesn't matter. You can learn today from the television set, not watching General Hospital, but watching how do I speak Spanish? How do I bring up and how do I scan a document? How do I do this? How do I do that as part of what I do? How do I make these things happen? Mm -hmm. And when people are taken off in some areas, oh yeah, Julia, Google, definitely Google it up. You need to, you need to know it, Google it. These are some of the things that we can do for our personal development of learning things within our um, spectrum of business, but also, listening to podcasts or taking up an exercise, do some things for you personally. Listen to some nice music, some things that are mentally st uh, stimulating. Engage in wanting to know more. Pick up an instrument. Take time with your new spare time to get new things done because you need that personal development time when you're in isolation or when you're in as this pandemic goes on 
take your new spare time to work on things that you need to get done during the isolation. Don't sleep it through. Begin to do some things that will help promote you to another level, okay? Also, the other area is be transparent about the challenges that you're having. And we're gonna go into a Q and A time, but be transparent about what's going on. And, you know, to look big in front of your clients is the one thing, but behind the scene, know what your problems are and be able to discuss them once you find a person that's a mentor. You know, be able to discuss them without taking their whole day and you have to tell them why you went to the store and how you went to the store and how you picked up this and what. No, 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 no. That's not what they're there for. They're there to hear, hear to listen to the challenges that you're having. So important parts of this is join a community of business people, like-minded people, come out of the places where you, you know, uh-uh, where you're with people that are constantly trying to uh, 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 break down what you have already started or say negative things about where you are right now. You know, you have to run, run or fly with the eagles. And my father always gave us <clears throat> this kind of uh, parallel because there's chickens that eat chicken feed and there's eagles that fly high and can sky down and get whatever they want. And you want to be one of those people. So I enjoyed this time with the Kingdom Women's Business Seminar today. And I enjoy being with you, of course. And I love mentoring. I love talking to people about business because as women, I love talking to them because they have so much more untapped potential. And a lot of things that we come up with is not by uh, God, by the left side, right side of the brain matter with men you know, the sciences and things like that, but we have the ability to create things. You know, we can make, huh, oh, we can make so many different things happen with just a minuscule of resources. And I encourage you today, don't give up, don't let it down, know what you have to prioritize and run with your vision. Because without a vision and without a dream and without a business, the people are gonna perish. And it has to be kingdom women that bring those things into fruition for kingdom advancement. And thank you so much today for your time and for your attention. God bless you. And we can go into, I don't know, Nyasha's there? Yes, ma'am. So um, earlier oh, okay. I did tell um, people as you were talking uh, to write down any questions that they have. So um, if anyone has um, a question for um, for um, Prophetess Karen here, um, just um, maybe you could do the reaction signs, put your hands up. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is a raise hand um, sign. Yeah, there's right at the bottom, sign. there's like a reaction sign. So yeah, there is. Um, if you just um, do that, I will unmute you so you can ask your question. Mm -hmm. So does anyone have any questions? And if not, it's still okay because you have Kingdom Women Business Enterprise. <laughs> yes. That's part of the network, see? Many people shy away from network and try to be Lone Star Ranger, you know, loans by yourselves. No, everything that we do now is either networking or collaboration. Mm -hmm. Networking and collaboration, and you can't run around like you the biggest thing in the in the uh, uh, biggest thing happening without no network, no resourcing, no connection into something that is bigger than yourself because that's the way that you advance by listening to people who have business experience and by initializing and doing things you're doing, trying it, try it, try it and see if it, it can happen. Try it, get on that, get on Facebook with this jewelry, get on these places. I mean, even if you gotta go on there and do glasses for sale, do them. What is it gonna hurt? You only brought 10 of them anyway. <laughs> Your audience don't know. I mean, these are things that you do to test your business areas. You know, if I'm talking about it, will it work? 
you know, that's the understanding that I want to get. And the thing is, is you have to make sure that you have, and if you're going for information systems, you know, information ages of things through the internet and things of that nature, you have to make sure that you stay friendly. So you got some friends to invite. Very true. You know, you have to stay friendly. And sometimes you don't want to friend a person. Friend them anyway. You're friending them for the purposes of your business and not your personal. You know, Mm -hmm. know how to divide things up and make it work for you because it can happen. It can work. You know, there's so many veins of opportunity that is now open for women that was not open in previous um, years, I'll put it that way, uh, and now has become open. You know, we have a first black woman vice president, an Alpha Kappa Alpha. Go figure. First black vice president, first vice president woman was a black vice president woman. And from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sororities Incorporated. (laughs) <laughs> I have Miss Julia has a question, so I'm just going to um, unmute her so she can go ahead to ask. Yes. Okay. Miss Julia, yeah. Hey, greetings. How are you? Greetings, greetings, greetings. I just wanted to thank you so much for just sharing that information that you shared. Um, it's so helpful, so informative, so encouraging, so inspiring. You know, I just started my own business. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. My husband's calling my name. Um, I just um, <laughs> I just started my own business, and everything that is so on point. And I also just wanted to. I don't really have so much as a, I have a lot of questions, but um, not that I can pose right now. But it's really important too, like you said, not to be so hard on yourself and to pace yourself. You know, I'm realizing. You know, I have the vision and I want to see it happen. I want to see it come to fruition. And then I found myself like comparing myself to where other people are at. And, oh, is somebody going to premiere, you know, something similar to what I'm doing before I can get my vision out? And I'm just realizing that, you know, everything is in its own timing. And it's important to take your time and do it right. Yes, Um, So I'm just learning that as I'm going and just letting God lead and guide me. Um, because he has it all planned out anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but yes. I'm just finding a place of rest in that and just kind of learning to enjoy this ride. Yeah, rather than, I understand it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, everything you said was so important. Like like mm-hmm. you said, even with just, I find myself getting engulfed and wanting to get everything done. So I'm sitting for hours at a time. Like you said, back hurting and everything. And I don't work out anymore. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking care I of understand. myself. I I'm, understand. I'm with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, 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 I had to make myself get up. Yes. Go walk. Because yep. I come, I come, my, you know, my uh, adjoining area for my office is from my bedroom. So I, you know, I think I could come and get in and start working, but it doesn't work because you have to clear your mind and begin a new day, you know, and you never will get a host of people celebrating. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you know, at first, you know, they'll tell you you can't do it. You know, they, yeah. why are you going to do it? You know, why you need to do it? We got enough money. We may, but there's something about, you know, and, and for me, it's something about me. I have to do business stuff. I, 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 you know, it's me. I have to open businesses. You know, if yeah. I, when I didn't open my business, I was opening businesses in the church. You know, I was starting a, you know, I was the principal of the school. So I started buying and finding where wholesale uniform places were. And I started selling them not only to our school, but I tried to find out who was at the other private schools and that was wearing uniforms that needed a discount. Come to our place. You know, we started a, a, a catering business, our church. You know, we started our daycare. I mean, it's just so many different areas of things you know, when you're bursting, you're going to do it one way or the other, you know, and you're going to get it done one way or the other, you know, but don't let people kill your dream. You know, I, I have this saying, you don't have to believe in my dream. You don't. I'm not here for you to believe in it. I believe enough in it. And when I first started my business, before I even opened a, a brick and mortar office, I would go to McDonald's and meet my clients. I would go right to McDonald's, bring my laptop and meet my clients. I surely did. 
because I didn't have a place to bring them. And I sure wasn't going to bring them home. So, you know, some things you develop and some things you do, you know, in the midst of working it out, some things you do, you try it and see if it's a necessity, you know, in the area where you're working and work it and know when you're working it, do your best. Don't try to slack. Don't try to come off the excellence because truth being spoken, every other culture does not have to do what we, this culture does to make things happen. And that's the honest truth. You know, uh, you know, you could come in with something that is exactly the same thing someone else has, but because of here, it's a different view of like, don't look so good because your hair, listen, you know, but when it comes down to the guns and the butter, I got it. You know, and you have to have that kind of assurance and your dream and your vision. I got it. I, I keep telling people, I say, it's nothing that I can't do. I wish it was, uh, you know, maybe I, I'm not flips and stuff like that, physical stuff. I'm, I'm talking about the, the guns, the meat and the potatoes of business. It's nothing I can't do, you know, because I try it all. I try to see what works in it all, you know, and sometimes you could be selling things and doing things in your whole uh, area of where you should be because you have good verbal skills and you can get people to buy a BB bat and a Mary Jane. You know, you have marketability to be able to market, to be able to market things, to be able to put things on the market and it works from strategy. But if you don't know the strategies and the platforms that are out there to be able to do it, ew, you still will lag behind in the technological world because that's the whole big audience where we're trying to reach and trying to engage. And sometimes you can't just stay Facebook. You have to come out of Facebook and engage in those LinkedIn places. You know, LinkedIn, you have to go to the business places where business people are and put your stuff on places where they advertise businesses for free. Yeah. And people will, people will make sure that they come and, and solicit your business for one reason or other, but you're the guy, you're the person on the, on the front. You know, I walked around neighborhoods with my little cards, you know, to make sure people knew where I was. But, you know, when you are going to do something that are on certain levels, you have to engage your entire community in what you're doing so that they can come to you. So, I mean, and that's, yeah, that's that's very true. And I would say because when I um, um, got out of school and I started internship, you know, I just, you know, wanted to just, you know, build my own production company and be creative and just, you know, make movies, make videos and stuff like that. And um, when I was doing my internship and my internship was teaching kids um, how to do film. And um, in the midst of that, because it was a nonprofit, um, we were doing side, side jobs to um, help make money for the nonprofit. And uh, we end up um, having to do um, video and photography for um, a networking group um, that was um, business professionals that were in, um, in the medical field, which is nothing to do with my field, um, but it was a whole bunch of black professionals both black men and women who had influences in high places with people who um, did, um, uh, who were CEOs of big major corporations like Wells Fargo, um, big medical places from different countries and stuff like that. And they had so much um, business insight that I didn't even know that I actually had um, a desire for business until I got into that arena. And I was just there taking yeah. pictures. And so I got to get all that and gleam all that information uh, for free. And then, um, and little did I know that God was giving me all this information to be able to use um, to help my mom with Kingdom Woman Enterprise because she was just like, oh yeah, there's all these business people that I keep running into and can you do their photography for them and things like that. And she was just, ha she has such a knack of just connecting people with other people. And she's like, yeah, I just want to help women, you know, promote their business. And I was like, well, I definitely know the marketing stuff and all the inside stuff being under yes. that umbrella. And, mm -hmm. um, that's how a, a whole nother business was birthed. 
So yes. I got to still do the things that I love and desire to do and create things because I'm, a, you know, and I guess that's that prophetic in us. We like to build stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand it. I understand it. So I know. we're visionaries. You know, we see things. Yes. We see the potential in things. We see the potential in people. people. And we yes. like to yes. 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 And create, mm -hmm. create business create you know finances create revenue create things out of it and um definitely um that that god has planted me in a great place because i get to connect with so many people with so many little babies that i can help nurse <laughs> help the thing is, is that when you're talking uh, you're talking and i'm thinking I'm, I'm i'm putting it together right now now because I'm looking and I'm saying, while you're saying those things, I'm like, wow, let me ask you one question. Has Arizona opened back up for business, schools, things of that nature? Yeah, they just um, started lifting the mask bands and all that stuff too. They're not even like um, forcing yeah. people to wear masks anymore and anything like that. So yeah, they're, they're definitely allowing people to operate um, more freely now. Because I, I mean, while you were talking, I was like, wow, why don't she just get her group of children with their cell phones and let them pay her for summer camp if it's 12 of them and from nine to three, get a summer camp and teach them for so photography. See, some things, summer camps give or schools did, and particularly when we had our school at uh, the academy, Provisional Promise Academy, I was there, we were there 22 years. Uh, we was actually there for about 22, about 27 years, because I went to uh, work with the councilwoman uh, on uh, as a council aide, and I left there to go work with her to help higher places. See, more people look at you when you, you know, because mm -hmm. their children were coming to our school, her and a couple of the judges downtown Newark and everybody had got word. But see, one of the areas that's big is these children. There will always be a place because the potential of our future rests on them. So, I mean, if for a summer camp is nothing to be able to run a summer camp, let them puppies bring their own lunch and take them on some field trips around the corner. Because, I mean, yeah because people are desperate to know what to do with their children for the summer, you know? Yeah. And, from, and it's, it's quite a few younger children who love using their, their phones. They love taking their own pictures. So why not teach them how to take pictures and put them on? Because guess what? They buy those pictures on a lot of these websites in order to include into their pictures for their, oh, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they, to they get buy them for the website. <laughs> put a website on for children's pictures only where they glean for children's things and this is through your business it's advertised through your business so you would get a lot of people you know really coming to you because when you offer something different in a school other than what they normally do you know just a little edge for parents to bring you know to help them to understand that you are not just there to babysit you know it's not a babysitting job but it's a job to help promote their children into a, a higher level of learning of something else other than you know because they this is the video world so you can't pull them from the video but you make it work for you teach them how to code definitely teach them how to code. challenge them to do their challenge them to make their own game for the summer it's so funny that uh, you're saying that because I'm actually uh, and I and I you know as a last at, I was last year right January of last year I had retired um, from my former job where I was working and um, training with kids and I was like you know I'm gonna be done. Oh, with you were with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like I'm gonna be done we're with children. With right? Okay. That's but, the prophetic and, part. <laughs> even though I have retired from working and teaching and training children, people kept giving me their kids and I end up being the babysitter of KWE. KWE and then, well. 
And now, um, actually, I will be doing my first workshop since I've retired teaching um, <laughs> training kids in film. So I can't don't start. Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> yeah, don't start. Don't start. So it's just so funny that you said that. I guess that's God's confirmation. Like, I know you want to get away from children, but the children are not getting away from you. <laughs> and you know what? I, you know, I was I wanted to do something when I left uh, going to work with the councilwoman. I had gotten, oh my God. I mean, world-renowned prophets, Bill Hammond. Oh God, prophet Chuck Pierce. Oh God, oh my God, oh my God. Alice Smith, oh uh, God, we had some, Jane Hammond, so many prophets, Apostle John Ecker, our good friend, so many of them had prophesied about government, government, government to me, and kept prophet, I, I kept hearing every time one of them would come about government, and it was something I aspired, but I know I was already engaged, you know, my dad had six churches, plus big networks of, you know, uh, ministers networks from all over the country and everything else. And we were still hosting conferences and we still had things going on at our base, you know, oh, but they were constantly talking about this government thing. And when we were um, at our school, when our, the councilwoman brought her children, her daughters start bringing her children, then people from the college start bringing their children and grandchildren, then the judge, uh, one judge brought his children, then a couple of others brought theirs. You know, never know why. You never know why God is setting you up and who he's setting you up through what you're diligently doing. Because see, God don't never give people something to do that's lazy. You go, you, you're you always over consumed when you get selected for something. Even in ministry, ministry, don't nobody want a lazy person you know, a ministry of helps worker, you want somebody that's gonna work with the program and can work with people, you know? And it's something, it's something. But uh, uh, my bottom line was that uh, politics found me the same way. Government found me the same way. And that was being busy, being diligent and being faithful and working. And the Bible says, if you don't work, uh, if you don't work and cause another man's work to, be exalted or push forth. No, and this is just uh, this is just uh, putting it in the caps. Who's going to give you your own? You don't get your own unless you help some other another man. You know. So it, I, I love what you're saying. I really love what you're saying, and I pray that you can make that happen. And you know, because parents are looking for something. You know, in the area of you know a a, a weight loss kind of camp, a camp to help their children lose. Those are kind of the um, strategy camps, you know, exclusive camps. You know, if you do nothing but put them on walking, a walking protocol, diet, movement, dance, you know, the different classes of things that you do, you know, you go to the website and find them and put them in place because your experience with children is already there. You know, you just need the other piece that goes with what you've got as an experience. And somebody can always deliver that experience to you at the same, at the, at that same hour, self-same hour, God will deliver it. Just in time enough for summer. It's 90, almost 90 degrees there in Arizona, please. <laughs> you know, I, I like, we will be totally outside. We might be to find somewhere with some shades. I don't want the children dying out yeah. here in the heat. But, you know, you just feel like clear out, degrees. You clear out a space. And you know, the things the things is is that with even with overweight children, the thing is is their self-confidence. So to be with the same kind of people, you know, and have get that regain that confidence, you know, and even lose weight with them is fun. You're like, oh, <laughs> you know, all that, you know, you make it fun. You know, our, our school was fun. We had our chapel times used to be almost two hours and, and, and the teachers would be so mad when they couldn't go into their math class and we had so much fun and I laid hands and they were falling out, crying, resting in the spirit, hugging each other and loving each other. And you know, it's, it's oh my God, it's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful experience. And I have no grandchildren, so I, I get all of them back anyway. 
but they keep still keep in contact with me. It was 306 children. I keep in con, you know, I stay on. Even the little ones, I stay in contact so that I don't know where they are today. You know, say, see your face up there. Hi, this is Miss Jenkins. You're doing a great job. I love the fact that you become a nurse. This is something. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Put your picture there. You know, it's a lot of things you can do to help people stay encouraged, you know. And I, and a matter of fact, I need my pictures redone because that one was. <laughs> I saw yeah. my nose. I was like, uh-uh, oh, that not her. Okay. <laughs> no yeah. more phone photos. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, with what you know, um, even with site building, you know, creating the websites, you know, they can become part of your, your, your crew that create the websites, you know. But they're very inventive, they're very creative, and children are uninhibited and they are a blessing. You know, they are a blessing. Definitely. But, you, you're speaking mm -hmm. right into my thing here because eventually, um, as KWE progress, I do want to incorporate um, where we help, um, especially um, kids within the foster care system that is aging out. Um, to train and mentor them and, you know, graphic designs, you know, promoting themselves and um, incorporating them with some of the businesses and maybe becoming part of their marketing team and things like that. Um, and also to help teach survival skills and help build up their resume. So this way they can also save. So this way when they become, when they start aging out, they have yeah. that financial support they have those mentors and that mental and emotional support so when they leave they have um places mm -hmm. to go right and because i mean when you see demand such as that because that is a big demand because regardless of what anybody thinks foster care is real mm -hmm. and this is my take foster care the children in foster care is not the responsibility of the government it's the responsibility of the church I adopted my baby, my youngest is he's just turned 17. And mo most people say, you got a 17 year old? Like I was 40 something when I had him, no. I adopted him when he was a baby. But with my schedule and looking at all the things I had on my plate, it was, I didn't know how, but I knew I had to rescue this one. And if each of us get one, we can rescue our generation because a lot of children are in the foster care system. It is big and they need help more with family dynamics and things of that nature. You need things to help get the child out of situations so that they can, re they, they can learn. I mean, they're faced with such grown folk situations. So, you know, to stay into uh, foster care is difficult because you're, they're getting sent from one position to the next position to where the government don't know where they want to put them next. And that becomes when they phase out after 18, 17, mm -hmm. 18, mm -hmm. you know, you still just got a bunch of 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do with those brains? You know, what do you do with those minds? How do you get them? You know, and there is uh, help for you. And one of the things I wanted to talk about too, is that some of you may be at the point and I, I, Naysia, I think you might be there at the point of getting your 501c3 now. Yeah, we got rather, it. <laughs> okay, rather than to wait later, because I write 501c3s and I tell people all the time, no, when you get at a certain point, you're doing service kind of, um, but you have an organization, a service organization, such as uh, that, you know, you get your 501c3 so that you can be able to, uh, you know, you could get grants. You know, you can be in the, in the uh, uh, in the the last groups that they're you know that they're putting numbers to the grants where you can be able to have your grant be able to test high because those grants are just not given because of what you said they're they're numbers that go with each one of the sections and they're looking for that numerical number for individuals to see how far they pass and what is their grade level at the end on that grant to be able to make those awards in the highest levels of those that comply with what they're looking for is the ones that get the grant, but you cannot do it without a 501c3. And another area I meant to go into, and that was talking about um, people that may be ready for payment protection loans. 
because now the government is giving them out with people who are not corporate people who got them the first time. But these people are small business people who depended on parts of that, um, uh, their resources as their salary. So they can apply for a PPP. They say loan, but then again, part of it or all of it could be grant. And so if you're stuck trying to still push to earn what you were earning before and you feel like you have to push or you have to hurt, you know, go through everything to try to still make it work and tides have changed, you can still be able to deal with those PPP loans. But the issue is that most people don't have their business in order because I've had, I have clients who I write PPP loans for and all year long, I'm telling them, you got to get this in order. You need to do your business taxes, do your business taxes so that you will be in line for stuff in the future. Now stuff is in the future. And now PPP loans, you would have to have your stuff, have you know your contributions or somewhere where you can be able to say, I needed this for sure because I needed it for wages for myself and I can make proof of it. But without making proof that you even paid yourself something, you don't wanna be out of your pocket. So make sure your compliancy is not only for your business as far as whether or not your federal and state is um, your federal and state papers are in place, but also that you are making sure, and this is tax season, so you make sure that you're filing those taxes because at some point, it'll all catch back up to you. You know, whether or not it's in one thing or another, you know, you, you have to have things in place and have things set up properly. And that's so you can operate more comfortably because you do not want a bill coming from un Uncle Sam you know, once you've uh, discovered that you were giving yourself money and find out all the money was going to you and not to your business. So, you know, don't try to do it that way. Put the stuff so that you have uh, your two business and it's not co-mingled together because those are the things you can get in trouble with is when you co-mingle both accounts together. And especially if you're doing anything by which you're handling other people's money, you know, you have to stay clean you know, and um, have your stuff in check for the government. So uh, don't give it the chance and don't give it the chance that they won't call upon you when you start putting all the stuff on your income, <laughs> your income tax under that schedule C because you own your own business and you got an EIN, but you ain't spent no money on nothing. You know, like supplies, you don't even know what you spent your money on. You know, you need to know that. So um, keeping records and keeping up now is important because you can grow so big so fast that you won't be able to keep up and be able to uh, retroactively go back to accumulate records. So you need records and you need good records. You can always polish them up, but have some kind of framework of things that you are doing and making accountable for yourself. So you'll know how your business is spending money and how much, and this is something, how much your home is dipping into your business money because that's where a lot of us get um, money siphoned up is because not because we can take our money and reproduce it and spin it back around, but because any, you know, because of the fact that you, you know, you're able to diverse what you've done in your business and if you're making money and what you're doing on your own personal side. So that's important. Anybody else with a question? And they're going to invite me back, I hope. Of course. Of course. <laughs> we would definitely have you back. We'll absolutely. Minister Teresa was with me at the provision of promise with uh, my dad, Apostle Ernest Leonard, who's gone on to be with the Lord for years. And um, uh, she was part of our ministry, her and her sister, her mom, Mama Scudder. And um, hard to yes. see. And see, it's such a good thing to see a uh, mother and daughter together in something like this, because it's hard. I mean, even with my business, it's hard because my daughter's concentration is not on business as I have it. 
is on veterinary business. You know, she wants to deal with the dogs and the cats and not humans, you know, and so it is. So That's a I, good you know, business out here because people love their animals out here. Out yeah, here. and oh, guess no. what? Do you all have, and let me just, I'm going to cross my legs on this because this is one of my business ideas. Do you all have um, pet cemeteries? I haven't seen one. I'm cool. I don't think so. That's I think, what, but I think there's like a way that you can like maybe get like a coffin, but most people, they'll just bury their animals in their backyard. I wish they did have a little pet cemetery. Well, if they don't have one, why you don't have, you can do it. I, I, I mine wasn't going to be a cemetery. It was going to be a memorial home so I can come and cry with them sell them their urn and their coffin and let people come up and say words about Fido. <laughs> I'm serious. That would be a good idea because you know I'm what? The, the day, cause I think you mentioned it on, on the getting intimate with KWE thing. And I, I swear that morning, that morning, I thought to myself, man, if my babies died, what would I do with their bodies? And then for you to come and say that, I'm like, well, if she starts this business, I'll be her first client because I'm like, what am I going to do with my babies if they die? Because I don't got a backyard to bury them in. But it's worth investigating for the state of Arizona. I mean, these are just, I give, I give these kind of business ideas to people all the time. Like, you know, I could sit and talk with a person for a few minutes and I got to another edge of an idea but the thing is is that you know find out from the state of arizona what do they require because my issue was for uh cremation i wasn't going to bury them it was going to be a cremation and the crematory i wanted to use was the um one from the county but see the issue for them is that they can't burn animals and humans in the same crematory so i was looking for a crematory that will cremate my animals and let me come pick them up. And that's where you get people. When I, I mentioned this, people that won't let you in, you know, cause I went to a crematorium and um, an animal one. And I just wanted to make sure that I can bring my animals there if I develop this to bring there to cremate. And the guy just shut me down. But see where there's one door shut this, five more doors open for us. And we know that because yeah. uh -uh, the I devil's not going to get that. Into, um, you know, those people who embalm and like stuff animals, I'm quite sure mm -hmm. they have a way that they get rid of body parts and, you know, and, oh. and, and break them down. So I would, I would look into that. The people who actually like mm -hmm. stuff animals and stuff like that and embalm animals and things like that yeah i would look into them you know and those, those are collaborations yeah because some people want to keep their dog how many puppies you got i got two babies <laughs> i don't have any children so those i'm about to get them because i don't have grandchildren i want one so bad i like i need grandchildren guys i don't know Oh, um, um, I just adopt all the children from church. I'm going to just bring her on real quick. Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, Pastor Alyssa, because for some reason, won't let me unmute you. I'm okay. I'm there. It just unmuted. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. I am so great. I wish it was oh, warm here, though. <laughs> I'm, I mean, my God, this has been so awesome. I mean, so informative. It's really been awesome. My question is, how do we get in contact with you and for your services? Uh, through Kingdom Women's. Uh, Kingdom Women's uh, give you the information for me. Okay. Because I, you know, I don't pull people out from their place. So I'll come back on Kingdom Women's on Zoom and talk with you. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I just wanted to share some things. I am actually, I live in Greenville, North Carolina, but my okay. hometown that I live, the, the hometown that I came from has so many things that is needed. And um, 
Mm-hmm. I'm always going back there doing things with women. And uh, I have a nonprofit organization that is Proverbs 31 Women. Wow, and okay. it's been um, registered and been in effect ever since 2017. But a lot okay. of things that I want to do, I have not gotten to that point because of mentors and having things in place to, like you said, a lot of people don't share a lot of things. And, and that has been, it's, it's been really difficult. So they won't, they won't give it to you and uh, they won't share it with you. And people are threatened if they feel as though your stuff is going to outshine what they're doing. But it's so many people in the world that has so many different diverse demands of uh, products and services that is, you can't over, you, you won't be able to overlap people. You know, you, you're not going for the same people, and especially when you have a specific edge or I, I always call it an edge on what you have to offer and the diversity or the difference is there from someone else's. You know, uh, when our school was in um, progress, one of the things that I made sure that we were doing was teaching the children how to sound and blend at age four. Because I was looking for four-year-old readers and that's what I was getting, four-year-old readers. They were not, and you know, parents felt that they were pushed a little bit far because it also involved quite a bit of homework and everything else. So, you know, oh, wrong number. I'll give you the right number. That's my um, other number. But um, yeah, we had the provider edge and the edge that we had was that our children were sounding and blending words together at age four, you know, and that was a highlight, you know, for a parent to come and stay at, because we had the windows, big, big windows, open windows, open, open areas. And um, the morning that, the mornings of the children's devotion in those four-year-old classes was open. So parents could stand there and actually watch them begin to start their day with their songs, with their sounds, with their blends and like, oh my God, you know, and that's what you want to do. You want to captivate the person or persons that you are, are, have to present before. And you have to, you want to captivate your audience of people who you are engaging for the purposes of making them con- of you know clients or customers of yours so it's a you know it's a balance and you are so true because people will not tell you the secret and the secret is (laughs) the secret is that there are so many secrets in every kind of uh, uh, business matter that you don't even need the experts you need the person with a lot of experience and a lot of guts and a lot of information that'll give it to you just like it is. And another thing I wanted to say was, you know, when you work, and uh, this was something that happened when I was working in the uh, uh, law firm for five years, it was my first law firm I had work, worked in. Uh, and um, it was, you know, I, I knew I was going, I had the one in a year, one and a half years of the law school. And I knew I wanted to go into some legal training and, you know, formal legal training. And listen, when you work at places and they got something that you want to do, you glean from where you are. I learned what forms they were using. I would use some of the forms and work them out and everything because I knew that was an area that I was going to go into. So why I'm going to not act like, and I got the fold them papers and I have to see those clients. Why I'm going to act like I don't see nothing. Yes, I do, baby. I done seen what is a client petition. So I'm going to, you know, it, 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 it's, you learn from where you are and you glean the information. And it's when you're in an area already that you want to engage further in, in your own dream. So, you know, it's uh, gleaning that information, gleaning that information. And my, my, my husband was really instrumental when we were getting ready to open our business because he really investigated every aspect, how many clients we need to pay for the rent. And I mean, he had it down to an art, you know, but still he wasn't the person that had to go in there to do it. You know, I had to make sure that it was a done deal, that it was sold, you know? So, I mean, when I had my, my brick and mortar office, I was close to at least 270 clients 
you know, and now I, when I came out, I made the selection of the clients I wanted to keep and sold the rest of my clients to someone who was interested in opening it. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. That is really awesome. I didn't sell them my office. I sold them my clients. Right. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's because you're confident. That's because you're confident in what you do and you Mm -hmm. know that you have an audience. A lot of people are intimidated or inferior of someone coming behind them to pretty much do the work pretty much similar to what they do. But where I'm at in my city, I mean, there's so much that is needed and everybody, everybody always saying there's nothing there. And my, I make them upset because this is my saying, yes, it's well there. And he's like, girl, you got to be kidding me. It's nothing. There's no jobs, no nothing. And I told him that's because you don't have vision, but I have vision. So all I see is wealth there. Yeah, that's it. That's all I see. That's all I see. (laughs) And and the thing is is that I had a uh, gentleman that was across, right across the street from me who had did my taxes previously and um, well known to the block and everything, all of the businesses around there were his clients. And I just moved my little self right up across the street. But he did not want to do anything one-on-one with individual clients. He'd rather work with corporations. So he would direct some of his people back over to me that wanted to do you know, individual tax. And I let him just go ahead and do them business taxes. But then he had a business also that was in, I believe it was Atlanta. It was a uh, got a pancake house, waffle pa- a pancake mm-hmm. house. And so he would have to leave. So when he leave, <clears throat> yeah, I was. You know, that's, I, that's powerful. Yeah, that is so powerful. Yeah. Sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time or even meeting the right person at the right time at that particular time. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's Cairo's time, that time. The Kairos is when you're, when the heavens engage into where God wants you and it's sealed. That's a Kairos moment. And you know, it looked like, oh my God, look like your hair stands up on your head, on your back and your neck. When you come into a Kairos time, because you know, only God, that can only happen. That, that just don't know. That's not the norm, but that was a time that God sealed that for me. And you got to know when he sealed it and then don't yeah. lay on it work it. Whatever God give you, you got to work it, you know? And one of the things my father told me when I, when he left this world is one of the things he told me, he said, whatever you do, whether or not ministry or anything, do not give up your business. Don't give up your business. Cause I, I mean, when he was laid the rest, I want to throw my hands up. It was, you know, ministry all the way. And I worked in ministry all the way, all of my life, but you know, he said, don't let go of your business. And I didn't because I knew how beneficial more it would be as I keep engaging, I can keep engaging our ministries into different areas that they needed to be and legally. And that's what I do now in ministry. Legally, I just do everything, you know, and that's where the Lord put it. And I'm not feeling like I'm missing nothing. (laughs) I feel, you know, there's nothing I can't do, you know, and that's the way I, I, you know, that's the way my dad showed me because he demonstrated that there was nothing that he could do when he wanted to buy buildings he brought 22 buildings you know then he sold those 22 th- buildings and brought six churches we paid for in full in different parts of the united states so hmm, yeah that's awesome thank you yeah. so much yeah and even though i'm not um, legally uh declared in other states to be able to practice law i can still no, I still know how to look up my stuff so that I can be able to come around it and be able to find somebody to endorse whatever I put together because I've already done the legwork for them. They don't have to do anything but sign off, you know. No, yeah, it, 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 it's interesting. And it's interesting what you can do because a lot of people feel like they can't do anything. They've aged, you know. Oh my God, how did people get chicken wings from us? Uh-uh. Something wrong with that. No. Mm-mm. And sometimes and the thing is, is that we've kept it too close. We kept it for home and not for the market. You know, we that's what we did with chicken wings. We kept it for home. I mean, we cooked it at home and it was good. 
we cooked it for church and something else, a wedding or whatever was good. But for a business, mm -mm, no. And so somebody else came along and made them chicken wings their own. And now they charge us <laughs> some money for just for chicken wings. Like, you got to be crazy. But so shall it be. And so that shall reminds it be. me of um, the, um, the McDonald's story, how it was two brothers. And they had, and they wanted to keep it in their home, this um, their hometown, and because they wanted to keep the, you know that that hometown feel, and they sold their business and sold their recipe to that man, and that man is, that man's a billionaire, mm. and and it's called embracing change. It's it's just like uh, Colonel Sanders; he was a tither, you know, Chick Fil A. These people are tithers. These people are givers. And you can't be a business person and not a giver. You know, you can't be a business person and be sitting around holding your tithe. And like, I'm going to see if I'm, no, no, no. You better get them puppies up out of your hand and get it into the storehouse so that you can be blessed. God will see your obedience and see those are the kind of kingdom businesses that are blessed, that are tithing businesses. And you, mm -mm. I don't care how sweet it get and how much you want to keep it and how it looks so good. Get it up out of there, cash app it, send it out of there and make sure you stay and make sure you keep your, your uh, covenant with God concerning the things that he say to keep, the things he say to keep, he say, keep them. He don't care. Make sure that you keep your tithe in that storehouse and make sure you keep your covenants that God has already established with you because his covenants were made to bless you and not to hurt you. you Amen. Know. Amen, yes. Amen. Does anyone else have uh, a question or a statement or anything? Okay. Go ahead, um, I'm Barbara. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, Aunt Barbara. Let me um, unmute you, ma'am. Let me see if this... The unmuting thing is not working as okay. okay Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, my phone is finally working. We're having problems with the network in the area, so sometimes you'll get some feedback or echoing. I just wanted to thank you for all of your information, and uh, I myself have just joined the. Um, women empowering women, and uh, I've known. Teresa, she was the first person I met when I came to Arizona. And now it's almost six years. So yeah. uh, I wanted to thank you for all of your information. Right and it brought back, I'm retired now. Mm -hmm. And it, I've been in, I was in management for over 50 years. So I've been managing people. And, and now I'm trying to get away from that because I was really burnt out. And yeah. now I'm getting into the, uh, the kingdom women. So I'm using some of my skills that I've, I've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I really appreciate everything. And it brought back me giving those presentations and standing before people and encouraging them and inspiring them. And, and, and even though I was over at least 12 units of people, mm -hmm. uh, I was telling Teresa, I say, I would just go out and buy little trinkets and give it to my operators, my staff. It wasn't yeah. big, but it was the thought yeah. behind it that I yeah. appreciate yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I love that. And I said, oh, they're still doing that? You know, because I don't <laughs> get that from the people here in Arizona, but yeah. it helps. It helps. Yeah. And I appreciate it. And I thank you for it. What area of management were you in? Uh, I was in, word, believe it or not, computers, word processing. Really? Yes, in Illinois, not in, in Arizona, in Illinois. I worked at CNA Insurance Company for 27 years. Mm -hmm. That's where I started my management courses. Wow. So you were working as a management person and an oper in a computer operators? Yes, with computer operators. I trained them how to use the computers. I worked with Hewlett Packard, which was one of the first computer makers. Yes. I timed and tested uh, applications for them. Wow. From which they made their rules and their limitations and their standards. Hmm. Yeah. 
Have you learned to write programs and things of that nature yourself? I did at one time, but you know, mm -hmm. technology oh, was, was evolving and we got away yeah. from that. Yeah, Cobalt was the, the main. Right, um, so, and once, once that left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was in college, that was, that's what it was, Fortran and Cobalt. Yeah, Fortran, was, right. Yeah, and with those were the two uh, uh, motors. Programs that were, yeah. yeah the motors of the, um, uh, the, the whole computer age. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you see yourself doing now? Um, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm, I can do I can do consults, but I was I was really burnt out because 27 yeah. years in insurance mm -hmm. and 17 in the hospital environment. So I just transferred that information from mm -hmm. one set corporate mm -hmm. into yeah. the medical field. So I, I was really burnt out. And medical medical and technology is the big two pieces. Those yes, big, big yes, right and I, I medical, see that now. I'm glad I did it when I did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Medical technology yeah. and education. Yes, because the United yeah. States really does have a fear of their children, and, and it's going to come up. We'll see it next year if we see it at all. Uh, mm -hmm. And those are the slippages as a result of the pandemic with education. Pandemic, yeah, you know, yeah. And things, to see your your interest can go yeah. really into also management in schools yes mm -hmm. yes yeah but then i'd have to get rid of everybody that's there mm -hmm. and start mm -hmm. all over. <laughs> i understand you had and to thank uproot god, it and thank god all of my kids are grown yes have, yes, yes i have grown kids and i have great grandkids and grandkids so i'm i'm working with them yes i don't blame oh, you look at me it's all gra grandma you old and i said baby i'm at home I sit, I read, I investigate, I research. Mm -hmm. So don't call me mm -hmm. old because I can tell you some things, you know. Yeah, and they say, oh, I'm sorry. I say, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't beat the experience. Yeah. But I, I yeah. would look into some areas because, see, you have management areas in the hospital. You have management skills in the corporate world. And some right. of that, you, you, can, you can couple it and bring it together. and for use as well because you know you can start a nonprofit use uh business yeah you know, uh, yeah it's so much it's so much yeah yeah it's so much because management is not only you know learn how to because young people don't know how to manage themselves so managing they should others have. <laughs> is yeah. that they have to learn about you know yes uh, it's things that they're going to come out of this pandemic not having that we got oh you know, i i already things. i already see it and even when i came from illinois to here I, you know i had to sort of put people in check well this is unacceptable mm -hmm. yes yes oh. yes 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 and it's true and it's no, true we, they're looking at me like well, what do you mean i said mm -hmm. well, remember i'm your consumer if i if i don't come you have nothing you have nothing, yeah. And exactly. I, had, I had to show them that, and they say, mm -hmm. "Oh, well, come to think of it, yes." Like I you just have to close your doors. If I, I don't just, come. yeah, I just got off yeah. of the phone with an insurance lady, trying to sell me some uh, burial insurance, and I told her, I said, "She says, so how was I?" I say, "Well, be, coming from a management perspective, you've got to talk to people on a third grade level. You." Mm -hmm. You're all in the air. It's because I have the knowledge, but you're not going to run across a, a me again, you know. Right. So you have to bring it down mm -hmm. where they understand. Mm -hmm. You're so busy yeah. trying to get to the money part, you just right, right, get right. all the I, part. I, I and then a, we hear the money part. Say we 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 space you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I I have a, a, a portion, portion. I have a she portion. She asked of me, business. so I had to. Tell her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a portion of business that I do, and it's called Living Legacy preparedness and in which it is you know i do the presentations to mainly churches okay you know for wills okay attorneys yes you know uh advanced care directives because i found that as a you know as a pastor we are burying people and we have to go through so much with families and things of that nature yes. it's crazy you know how to how to write how to put your order of service together. What do you want us to do? Right. You know, and I'm trying to break into churches while they're still in Zoom so I don't have to make 
uh, formal presentations, but yeah. they make it while they're on yeah. Zoom, you know, because people need those kind of legal services, but they're scared yes. to reach out because you know they're thinking yes, like they are. You're trying to, yes, they you're are. trying to make you're trying to make it so that I'm I'm dying. Yeah, we all got to go. But I mean, yeah. when you go, we want to make sure that we got the right thing in place for you because this right. is the story of your life. You know, we don't want to not celebrate your life. We want to celebrate it, but we want to make sure that we have all the pieces in place and we don't have to place up all yes. the money. For the, yeah. But uh, uh, even for the team that's on today, um, this, even though you're in your own business, and thank you so much, Mom, even though you're on your own business, make sure that you establish a pension retirement program for yourself. And you do that, put $50, $25 away a week where you cannot touch it to bail out the business, bail out the nothing, bail out the nothing. And don't touch it because many times we've worked in the past, we didn't have those kind of opportunities with um, uh, different things that was given to us. We got vacation days, but a lot of people were not part of the retirement age uh, individuals that received 401ks and retirement and they had to do it supplementally later on. But the best way to do it and the best way um, even to save on your taxes is throw money into places that save you money as opposed to consuming the money. You know, And it makes all the difference in the world when you get older so that you can have something other than what social security wants to give to you you know, you have something to work with. If you don't have a house, if you don't have your own property, I'm gonna tell you again, United States is giving away money and you may have to go through a, a six week training of how to find the correct house, what you have to do. But listen, if they're gonna give you that money, go through the training and learn what you have to do so you can be a homeowner in your own house, you know, your own property because it makes a difference when you um, begin to get older and have assets and you want something to be able to leave somebody else, you know, other than your clothes, <laughs> you know, you want to be able to be a blessing to every one of your generations. So, you know, we learned how money is made, spent and used, but kingdom, when you become kingdom, that don't mean you're still a servant. That means you're on the top when you call yourself kingdom. And kingdom people know how to make it work and know how to save. They know how to put their money up. They know how to make it work they, because they're functioning solely on God's kingdom principles, you know, solely. You're going to treat people right. You're going to handle business with integrity, you know, things of that nature. You're going to walk up right before the Lord because he gives you the power to get wealth for what? To establish his covenant that he made with us. So that's why we're getting those ideas, those business ideas, the things that we're receiving and take the load off yourself and be good to yourself, but don't overindulge yourself because we can shop for days. Every woman can shop, whether or not you're shopping for food or clothes, you know, you're still shopping and it's that same still desire. You have to learn to shut it down and walk out stores and, and man, so you can save for your dreams that you have because when a dream is deferred, you know, Langston Hughes say it, so it does explode like a heavy load. And people have left diamonds on top of the, the, all of the grave sites of things that they wanted to do, but never did, you know? So there's diamond mines that have been buried, you know, of people's ideas. So we wanna make sure we make the fullness of whatever idea that we have and whatever the Lord has given us as a vision for life purposes to fulfill his plan is also being noticed and being taken up in our planning in our life so we want to make sure in all things we please god amen amen god bless you thank you so much and any more questions oh does anybody else have a question if not we'll close out and um let prophetess go um and there's a there's a song uh, I don't know if you can put it on. It's called Kingdom Woman. Have you all heard it? No. Who is it by? I don't know. It's on Zoom. <laughs> well, uh, you see. know, our our um our ministry, our women's ministry, and this is this is so ironic or so timely, you know, for me to be here with you all because the kingdom we have our women's ministry is called. Kingdom Women's Fashion to Reign. 
And, you know, the song Kingdom Woman uh, was, you know, somebody found it. And um, I, I wanted to play it when we came on. I was messing with my computer, but I couldn't get it going uh, to make sure I could uh, share it on here. But if you get a chance, uh, it's Kingdom Woman and it has like a little nice move to it. And oh, oh God, there she is at top. This Black one right here? Yes. Let's see. Turn the volume up a little bit, Sister Naija. Mm -hmm. Is it turning up? Yeah. 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 It has a little Caribbean flavor to it. Oh, I can't hear it up either. Yeah. Kingdom woman, kingdom woman. And what she does in the song is define who a kingdom woman is. Can you hear it? You can't hear it? Okay. I can't. Amen. Amen. So you have your theme song. So you have your theme song, Kingdom Woman. So while you're working around the house, put that song I on. Know. I don't know. Now I can't hear anything. I, oh. <laughs> you got me? Yeah, OK. <laughs> oh, OK. I can gonna, hear you now. I'm going to roll, but take that song, put it on, encourage yourself, keep yourself encouraged, You know, play it in your sessions, and keep yourself reminded of who God said you are, because you are God's best, and you are a Kingdom Woman. 
and God has purpose for you to be a design that was set aside that could only be made out of a rib of a man right by his heart. And that's why he loves you so much. But God bless you and thank you so much. And I look forward to being with you again and again and again. And if you need me, call me. I'll call Naisha <laughs> or Teresa and we'll get you hooked up. Amen. But let me pray before we leave. Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath rest day. Lord, that you have made the Sabbath rest day a day for us and it is a delight and we call it the holy of the Lord. And Lord, we thank you for those people that have come into this place and come into this platform to hear and to perceive the next agenda of what you have for us as kingdom women. So Lord, we do not wanna count these times lightly or throw them to the side, but Lord, we thank you for usable things that you have placed in our lives, usable people that will help us be encouraged and we bind and we break the enemy's strategy of keeping us disengaged with the information that we need in order to excel, excel in this life. And we give you praise and we give you glory for favor, supernatural favor that's upon each and one of our, our lives and that you have given us people in our path that will help guide us and lead us into things to bring us to a place of peace and prosperity in Jesus name, amen. And God bless you. See you on Thank the next you. Time. Thank you all for coming. This is my move. This is my Michelle Obama move. <laughs> God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. See you then, everyone. Bye. Bye, and, everybody. Oh, change my number 336-7684. It's um, my other line is on there. The, the 973 and one? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the one. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll send that one out for anyone who asks. Um, All right. Thank you, Naisha, for everything. Everything. You super. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. God bless you, Teresa, and God bless everyone to this on the line today. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.